oh my god oh my god we have more babies than i expected <laughs> Welcome to today's video where I am doing a massive invert update. If you didn't know, I own a range of inverts, including lots of different isopod colonies, including a new one that you haven't seen yet, an ant colony that is a few years old now, bioluminescent plankton, which I guess isn't an invert, is a plant, but we're going to include it here, uh, fruit beetles, and an invert arachnid that I would like to get in the very near future so stay tuned for that and if you do like bug videos like this please like please subscribe and even share if you can um, because it really helps I'd love to talk about more animals than just leopard geckos and I do want to expand on from that and talk about bugs more so if you like it if the video gets out there and you know that's encouraging for me that you guys want to see that so first I want to look at the isopods and the first colony we'll be looking at are the dairy cows. Now if you saw my video when I'm unboxing them, you'll know I only got 25 individuals and now we honestly have probably hundreds. They have bred amazingly. Um, in each of these videos I will be adding in rotting wood, leaves, a few little accessories and insect fuel. But yes, so if you are starting out with isopods, I cannot recommend these enough. Not only are they super active and easy to see in the enclosure, but they breed really quickly, really easily. I'm actually even considering adding these into Drogo's tank because he does have some orange ones in there, but mm, their cleaning ability is a little lackluster. Now, I do find they tend to be more active at night so we are filming in the day and you can't see them so much you could probably see a lot of spring towels and little flies that is something that happens when you have sort of an enclosure like this where it's damp and humid um, but let's see if we can find oh look at all those spring towels here we go look at that honestly I don't know what it is about isopods but I could like watch them all day they are so cool and yeah, as I said, they are breeding so well and I couldn't recommend these guys enough. If you're starting a bioactive tank, especially for a high humidity enclosure like a crested gecko or chihuahua, something like that, then these would be really good. They might stand out to your gecko, so they might get nibbled, but the rate they reproduce is not an issue. Next up are the giant orange isopods. So these are the ones I probably have the longest. I did begin with tropical grey wood lice and they do live in some of my geckos enclosures, but the giant orange ones really took over. So these are doing great in the tank and the ones that are in here were actually originally in Drogo's tank and there were just so many that I put them in here and I actually had to sell quite a few because we were getting tons. However, the population did drop quite significantly after I sold off a bunch of them so we have been working to sort of build them back up so if we go in here what I have noticed now I've opened this is there is a bit of mold and actually some of the wood that I bought has gone moldy now as I said these are hot humid enclosures so that's bound to happen um I have to keep an eye on that to make sure that it doesn't impact the isopods negatively so we have some down by the cuttlefish. Now, interestingly enough, I've had this species in my gecko's tanks for a few years now, and I never included cuttlefish in my gecko tanks. Like, no source of calcium, which I don't really know why I didn't do that. So I actually put some in the tanks, and overnight, I mean, these were on it, the cuttlefish now is completely nibbled around, so if you don't do that already maybe put a bit of cuttlefish in for your isopods and i'm sure they will benefit from it now these are the expensive ones these are the panda kings they cost me five pounds each um so really each individual we are hoping you survive so they have remained in this smaller enclosure just because there are such few individuals and breeding does tend to take longer and um they don't reproduce nowhere near as quick as the dairy cows so we have a while to you know build this up but i have seen babies few and far between but they are there so if we look in here it might be hard to see but the springtails are doing really well as i said you know there's only a few individuals in here so it does tend to get quite difficult to find them you might see an adult the babies are extremely difficult to find 
my god, oh my god. We have more babies than I expected. Look at those. Oh. Now these guys definitely will not be going in my uh, reptile enclosure because if one of those gets eaten, that's an expensive meal. So um, these are definitely ones I am just sort of cultivating in here and eventually I would like to expand them into a bigger enclosure. These aren't really beginner isopods, but once again, with any of the isopods, they are fairly easy to look after. So um, don't be put off, but the price might be quite high for them. And finally, for the isopod section, we have the giant canyon isopods. Um, I actually went, I saw these in a reptile shop, I had a spare enclosure, I'd heard that they could be quite good in arid environments, so I did think, okay, maybe I can get them, breed them, and then try them out when I had enough individuals in my leopard gecko enclosures. So if we have a closer look, ooh, hello. As you can see, the springtails are really the ones that are enjoying this environment the most. Um, I don't know if I've seen babies, I may have seen babies in here, but because the adults are just grey and they blend in easily enough, I can't imagine the babies standing out that much. But I have only had these, I'd say, a couple months now. Um, and, you know, so it takes a bit of time to get things going. And actually, originally, when I bought them in the shop, they were advertised as ten of them in the tub. And the shop gave me four. Literally four. There wasn't just dead ones in there. They only had four. And, yeah. Me being the isopod Karen, I went back <laughs> and made sure I got all 10 because what if all four of them were male? You know, no good. Before we move on to the ants and the beetles, I did just want to tell you a future pet I would really like. Now, if you follow our Etsy page, The Bearded Shrimp, you may notice a bit of a theme. I like to design things for jumping spiders. I think they're adorable and I would love to have one. Um, I am really interested in making sure I have an enclosure and everything set up before I have one because the last thing I want is a little jumping spider to arrive and I have nothing prepared. But that is definitely something I am aiming to get this year. Um, so if you'd like me to document that journey, if you want me you know, to upload a video where I do up the tank and when I get the spider and all of that, please like and comment below and let me know. If you have your favorite species of jumping spider, let me know below as well. I'd love to hear it. Next up, my ant colony. So this is probably my most successful, longest lived colony. I believe Liz's colony is around four years old um, and they've gone through uh, hibernation each year and every year whenever I put them in to hibernate it's always a little bit nervous you always think hopefully they come out and they're all good and when they do come out they go wild in terms of um, the numbers the population is crazy and I'll show you some footage of a time lapse I did of them Liz is still doing well she is still plodding away obviously they can live for years but I'm just overall really happy with what I'm seeing here I would love to do more updates on ads but I feel like Ants Canada is such a big channel that people mainly only watch him. I don't think I can compete. His footage is incredible. Next up, we have the bioluminescent plankton. As I said, technically not an invert, technically a plant, but it doesn't really fit into any other category, so I thought I'd update you here. Uh, so it's doing really well. It got its first feed after a month, and I did post this on Instagram, so it is as a reel. But, um, so... When you feed it, it's kind of like feeding a plant. You only want to do it like maybe once a month. And when it hits the plankton, because it moves them, it, you see this burst of light. So obviously it's in the day now, I can't show you how it's looking. But from that footage, you can see it looks absolutely awesome. It's doing really well. Okay, just a warning, this next section does include dead insects, although they do still look alive. So this is about the African sun beetles, the fruit beetles. So unfortunately, they are no more. Um, basically, the last update you saw, I believe I lost about 10 or 11 of them because of an apple that I believe got them drunk and they died. Some people said maybe it was the gases from the apple, but actually we still had a lot of individuals still alive after that. So I can only assume that... Uh, those ones ate it and got drunk and died. Some people did suggest that maybe they were all about the same age and died, but I think that'd be too weird to happen overnight. But um, one thing you should know about these guys, they are prolific breeders. So we started off with five or 10 grub and they soon got to business. Like once they were beetles, they were breeding all the time and 
it got to the point where I had to sell off some of the beetles because we just had so many and I'd also sell off grub. I'd also feed some of the really small, just freshly hatched grub to my leopard geckos. So the success rate of their breeding was really great. I was told though at about the third generation you should introduce new genes. And honestly, although I did really enjoy owning these, um, I did get a lot of fruit fly from them because of what their diet is. And just their numbers were increasing so much that I didn't want it to become crowded. I didn't want to have to keep selling off them. I didn't want to have to keep feeding off them. So I did make the decision not to introduce any more genes. So although they had fun trying to reproduce, it wasn't successful. So eventually the last ones have died out. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this update. As I said, I would love to do more things like this. And if I do get the jumping spider in the near future, then obviously I'd love to document that if you'd like to see it. But thank you for watching guys and goodbye.